Hey everyone, I wanted to show real quick how to make a very organic epithelial bilayer cross-section uh, using MoGraph and some deformers in Cinema 4D. So I'm going to open up a new scene here and I'm just going to start with a sphere. I'm going to set its diameter to about 20 and I'm going to put it into a cloner object. Now I want to change that cloner from grid to honeycomb and you see that they're really spaced out right now. So let's bring in the cells a little bit closer to one another and I don't want full 10 in height I want a little bit less than that but I do want a lot more in the width so now we have this wall of perfectly even very unorganic cells all right so with epithelial cells they start you know very plump and spherical maybe cuboidal when they're at the bottom but as they go up they start to flatten out so we can get that effect by adding a plane effector to our cloner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the scale. And I want them to be shorter at the top. And I want them to be wider as well. So I'm going to add a little bit more space in these. And go maybe, not 20, excuse me. Uh, let's go just a little bit more. All right, now this is just flattening all of them. So what we can do is we can add a field, a linear field, and we'll flip that into the positive Y. And now you can start to see that we're starting to get this, uh, the, this slight compression as they move upwards. Now I'm also gonna go into the parameter and I'm gonna move the top ones down a little bit so they start to squash down. And now we have this very nice Still unorganic, but at least getting more accurate epithelial cross-section. And it's a matter of just kind of pushing and pulling the height and the location of this linear fall-off field. And maybe we adjust the size a little bit more so they start to interdigitate. Okay, so here is our very unorganic epithelial cross-section. How do we want to make this? How, what can we do with this? Well, we can use a deformer that doesn't get a whole lot of love, it seems, and that is the camera deformer. So if I put this cloner into a null object, I'm going to hold shift, I'm going to go into my deformers, and I'm going to create a camera deformer, and by holding shift, I am, that is going to create the camera deformer as a child of that null object or a sibling of the cloner. Now, what is the camera deformer? Well, it's very much like the liquify tool in Photoshop and After Effects. It's a two-dimensional deformation based on a grid pattern. So we can increase the resolution to something I like so that my deformation is approximately squares. But we need to establish a deformation point, and that deformation point is done by creating a camera. So we'll jump into our camera here. I'm going to take it out of the hierarchy so it does not get influenced by the camera deformer. And I just want this to be pretty much straight on with this bilayer. So I'll zero out my rotation of the camera, and then I will also zero out in the X. So now we have that perfectly framed up. I'll zero out in the Y as well. In our camera deformer, we go into the object, we need to link this camera to the projection point. And now if we go into our point mode and grab brush tool, shrink the size a little bit, we can start with just the smear. Now we've got the ability to simply move points around, noodle them around in space. We can maybe, let's grab the spin brush, and we can spin. If we hold control, it'll spin the opposite way. And we're just starting to noodle these around and mess them up a little bit. We can smooth that back, go into our smear again, move things. And the amazing thing about this, def this deformer is that it is very lightweight, and we can we don't have to be looking at it from at our cross-section from just this perspective. We can exit this camera and we can orbit around and we can see that this is still maintaining that deformation because it's being projected from that location. We've got a strength slider as well. And an added benefit too, if we were to need, let's say, a top layer of, you know, 
cells or we, we need to we need to clone onto a plane here on the topmost layer. Uh, we can widen this out, increase its width. If we drop that down to the sibling of the camera deformer as well, we see that that too is being deformed. But one added benefit of this deformer is that it does work with fields as well. So if we don't want this perfect, you know, the striation, uh, undulation receding back in space, you know, completely for the, the entire uh, plane here, we can go into the camera deformer, we can grab another linear field and now by default that creates it way back over here for some reason. I'm going to switch it to the negative Z. Move that forward a little bit, shrink it down. And you see that we've got the undulation, the deformation being controlled by the camera deformer up at the front here. And then we have no influence of the camera deformer on the back side. And back here we could use another displacer or something to create some sort of organic undulation. Plus one wanted to share today how a use case for the camera deformer and how to get a nice organic looking epithelial cross section.